sacrifice his troops. Well, it, it's a problem in so far as he's prepared to squander life and go beyond the bounds of common sense in order, in the hope of achieving uh, military aims that are not achievable, purely by throwing people at it. And uh, therefore, he might prolong the war long, uh, for a longer period than uh, a man of better military judgment and experience would uh, be prepared to prolong it. How likely do you think a ground war is? I mean, <coughs> is it inevitable, do you think? Well, I think we come back to your first question. How, how, to what extent is he prepared to sacrifice human life uh, for the benefit of his own grandeur? And I think he's prepared to sacrifice an awful lot of life, human life, for his own grandeur. And so I do believe that a, a ground war remains uh, a, a likelihood. General de la Villiers believes that by attacking Hafchi, Iraq was probably trying to draw the Allies into an early ground war. Militarily, to launch an operation of that nature with no air support and no artillery support, uh, if we'd done it, I would have said it was criminal and a sack the commander. He's getting pretty desperate, and he sees the land battle as being his opportunity to create the maximum number of casualties, impose the maximum number of casualties on the uh, coalition forces. And I'm sure he's trying to entice us into the land battle before we're ready to go. As for the Allied air attacks on Iraq and Kuwait, the general said they've been effective and accurate, but he admitted there have probably been civilian casualties. There has been spillover. I mean, we've had missiles that have been shot down in flight and exploded prematurely, uh, and are undoubtedly probably done a little bit of damage and perhaps hurt and killed people. But I'm afraid if you start a war, then that's the sort of consequence you've got to accept.